Welcome back to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society. And I'm here again with Elba Cabrera for part two of her oral history. So Elba, um, before we move forward with your life, uh, I know you wanted to circle back to um, uh, some aspects of your childhood and early adulthood that, um, uh, that you wanted to touch on. So feel free to start wherever you'd like. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking about it and I said I, I didn't get enough uh, information or uh, to uh, the time that we came to live, you know, in, in the Bronx. And uh, I wanted to let people know how wonderful, wonderful it was yeah. uh, because it was a community, again, I had left a community in, uh, in uh, Spanish Harlem sure. and this was another community. And what I still remember is all these storefronts yeah. with all these storekeepers. And uh, it was a, a, a very diverse area in terms of uh, other people. We, there were very few Puerto Ricans, but there were uh, other uh, nationalities like Italian sure. and Jewish and uh, German yeah. and Irish. And um, all these storefronts were like um, the Italian deli. Sure, yeah. And that yeah, was yeah. great because we used to love the, the heroes. Oh, yeah. And uh, the shoemaker. Oh, sure, yeah. Shoemaker. And we had also uh, the pickle. I think I may have mentioned the pickle, the pickle store because we used to, uh, as kids, we used to run by the barrels and... and take a pickle out <laughs> and run away and uh, it was that and then there was the cleaners and there was a pizzeria sure yeah and we just uh, you know uh, everybody knew each other yeah and I and I don't know if I said this story before but one day I, I don't know I was playing with my friends outside I was I guess around uh, about 11 and uh, the uh, storekeeper came out, the one that, the shoemaker, and he says, I'm going to tell your mother, you know, whatever it was I was doing, I, you know, I was pretty, a pretty quiet child, so I don't know what I was doing, whatever it was, he was going to tell my mother, and uh, that I knew. Oh, did, did he tell your mother? Do you remember? No, oh, that's no, good. They, that's they used good. to threaten just right. so that we yeah. would, and, and we would listen, you know, Yeah. that was the other thing, you know, we just listened because... They were the adults. They Absolutely. were the grown-ups, and uh, you can't do that now. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, and I know other people have mentioned. You know, this is another thing unique about the stores at, at the time in general. But keeping account books, you know, and it's not like they would expect you to expect people to pay everything. Oh, let that. me say I, that I remember clearly. Uh, we had a little grocery store right next door to where we lived in the building on Concord Avenue and I would go there my mother would leave me a list yeah and he, and I would tell him that my mother would pay later so he he would write it down and then my mother would at the end of the week she would go and she paid the bill sure yeah so yeah, yeah. it was the beginning of credit yeah yeah and they didn't charge you extra yeah they were really nice people it was yeah I had forgotten about that yeah and uh, it, it was great um, I'm just trying to, you know, I did tell you the story about my niece when we were, did I tell you that story? That uh, she was three years old and I... Oh, yeah, you I did, did you, you did, you did. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> those, are the, those are the memories that I will never forget. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, when I, you know, when I started to think about it, I didn't, I didn't really touch on... You know, here I was, uh, 11, 10, 11 years old, and I had made friends, you know. Sure. Uh, they were all <clears throat> lived about a block or two away. And uh, we, we really, you know, we bonded. We bonded so that we were friends forever. Yeah. Until they, you know, most of them, quite a few of them have made their transition. Mm. But... Um, we were able to enjoy each other, you know, during that time. And we used to have a, a group of, of girls 
and then we there was a group of boys yeah and uh you know everybody was what do you like you know that kind of stuff it, <laughs> sure, was, it, sure. was, it was it was really it was clean fun yeah and it was during <clears throat> during uh well the world war had ended in 45 yeah so but the next one that came that they called it the Korean conflict, sure. which really turned out to be the Korean War. Yeah, uh, that's when a, a, quite a few of the boys, the young boys that we knew, went to, to uh, yeah. war. Yeah, and in fact, I remember we lost one to, that I remember. There was one that was close to us, you know, that we we really knew, and there was another one that we <clears throat> used to say hello to, and we knew, sort of knew, his family. Sure. Uh, and he also died in the war. Wow. So that was, you know, that was very hard, you know, Absolutely. for a young person to, to, uh, to experience because then that sort of sets you up for later in life, whether, you know, if you have children yeah. and what you're going to do. So that was a very hard time that we lost those young people. Because they were, you know, maybe 18, 19 years old. Sure. And that was difficult. But uh, we did have fun. You know, we used to play in the street. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the girls had their games. Uh, we played potsy. Sure. And we did play handball. I had a bicycle. Yeah. I had a bicycle. And uh, let me see what else we played. Uh, oh, rope. rope. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I never got good at the double double dutch. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that I didn't get, but I used to do the other one. Yeah. I wish I could do that now. I can't even stand up now. <laughs> but that was the other thing. So there was a lot of things that we did, you know, uh, in the summertime, you know, that we could go out. Sure. Oh, we could skate. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used yeah. to skate. And there weren't very many cars Roll, on the roads. And still, there right? weren't, yeah, very little. I mean, if you had one car when you were playing in the street, it was yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was great, you know. Uh, the street was ours. Yeah. And uh, we just had a lot of fun. But I remember that we had to be in at a certain time. Sure. And if we weren't, you know, that was, we would get reprimanded. <laughs> I'm sure. And uh, uh, I was a pretty good girl, you know. I, I did listen, most of the time I did listen, you yeah. know, uh, to my mother. We used to, oh, another thing we used to do, we used to go to the beach in the summer. Oh, yes, beach. yes, yes, absolutely. We used to go to Orchard Beach. And uh, my girlfriend Josie's mom, she used to be the the person to take us because yeah. we were like I don't know, I guess twelve sure. around there, twelve. And she would take us. And one time I almost drowned. Oh no! Yeah, because wow. on Orchard Beach, when people would dig in the sand, yeah, you know, you have these holes, and uh, and then when the tide came in and out, you know, the holes could be with the water was. Yeah. And I went in and I sunk into this hole. Oh no. I don't even know who who got me, but I was scared. I was wow. so scared. But uh uh you know, I got out. So I never forgot that. Yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we used to take a bus that used to take us to Pelham Bay. Okay, sure, yeah. It ran on the Bruckner Bruckner Boulevard. Okay, yeah. We, I don't even think we had an expressway at that time. Yeah. It was Bruckner Boulevard, and we would go to the end, and if we had money, well, mo most of the time we'd, we'd, we'd take another bus that would take us. Sure. Um, what, when we, it, oh, that's going back a little further, that when um, Evelina and, and Lillian used to go with their friends, they used to take me. But they, they didn't have money. Yeah. And then when we got to uh, Pelham Bay, they used to walk from Pelham Bay to the Ooh. Orchard Beach. Wow. That's a walk, right? That's a right? serious walk, yeah. And here I was, I guess, around, I don't know, maybe six, seven years old. Yeah. About six. 
and uh, I would start crying that I couldn't walk anymore. And and there's, there's a, a few of the boys. Yeah. They were carrying me <laughs> on their shoulders. I remember that clearly. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Yeah. So I knew when to cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was another outing that we did, and I think one time. Um, uh, my girlfriend's mom, Malta was her name, took us to another, uh, uh, it wasn't a beach, it was a pool mm. up in Westchester. We used to take the bus. Okay, I see. And, right. and we went there, and but that was like a special treat. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to go there, but eventually they stopped the bus because they didn't want people from the Bronx going there. I see, yeah. yeah <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, the same thing that happened with... Uh, What's the name of that uh, Bronx? Oh, uh, Shorehaven. The Shorehaven. Yeah. Let me tell you a story about Shorehaven. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. We went one time, and uh, they actually told us they weren't going to let us in. Mm. And they said, why? They said, because they didn't let Puerto Ricans. Yeah. yeah. And I never, he, here we were already maybe 15, yeah. 14, 15. And I never forgot that. And when we moved to Co-op City, they had lost a lot of their membership, so yeah. they started recruiting here. Yeah, and a lot of the uh, Latinos, uh, the Puerto Ricans, went, and I said, and I told my husband I would never go there. No way, no. No, I, I, they refused me once, and then I couldn't take my money now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But that was, you know, that. I remember that so clearly. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard a you lot heard of the, stories, stories about, about the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. eventually they closed. Yeah, absolutely. Eventually they closed. They couldn't. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was uh, another thing. But anyway, getting back to my my friends, uh, another thing that we, as we got older, yeah. then uh, we started having house parties. Okay, sure, yeah. And uh, there was one in particular that we went to, there was two places in particular where the parents, you know, uh, hosted yeah. the parties. And they were great. I mean, we used to have so much fun. And it was just clean fun. We, you know, we danced and, and had a good time. Sure. And at that time, we weren't drinking liquor or anything like that. Yeah, we, yeah. We were just uh, enjoying us, our company. Absolutely. Yeah, so that was, that was one of the things that we did besides the... I remember the, the Orchard Beach, those joints were really, really nice. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, really yeah. Uh, a wonderful experience to, you know, to sort of be half on your own because you really weren't. Yeah. But uh, it, it, was, it was a good time. And uh, all my friends, you know, all the childhood friends are gone except two mm. that... Uh, that are still alive. One yeah. is in Florida and one is in Arizona. Oh, sure, sure. So we keep in, we still keep in touch. Yeah. yeah, I uh, I treasure those days, you know, because we, you know, we were innocent. Absolutely. It was a different time, and uh, our parents trusted us. You know, yeah. they had to work, and they and they trusted us. You know, to to be home and and not do anything that would. You know, be detrimental. Sure. And uh, we we did. We listened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was uh, a time that you listened to your parents. Absolutely. And I I carried that with me till till now. You know, I yeah. still I could still hear the voice. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mom. Okay, I won't do that. Because you know, some things just sort of stick. To you Definitely. and you do things that you don't want you wonder why you're doing it yeah but it's because it was instilled in you when you were young absolutely you know yeah. like uh, little superstition things to sure. creep up like don't put the hat on the bed because that's bad luck yeah don't open up the umbrella because that's bad luck yeah yeah and yeah. you know you you listen because those were your parents <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> and and and, uh, and you would uh, do what they said. So when I see you know uh, children being mistreated now, it hurts. I yeah. Say, you know, I've been so blessed to have a family that loved me and cared for me, 
and reprimanded me when I did something wrong. Definitely. But, but never, I, I didn't know what a curse word, curse word was in my house. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. nobody cursed at all. Uh, the only one that Lillian uh, used uh, the word coño, which okay. is, yeah, is something that comes out of you. Yeah. It's not, e I guess it's not even considered a, a curse word. It's just, sure. it's just part of, you know, our, our way of talking. But, but, but that's, that was about the only thing I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lillian didn't uh, curse Evelina, my mother. So when I, when I hear cursing now, it's just, I, I cringe. <laughs> it, was, it was only your niece who <laughs> cursed. <laughs> yeah. Three year old. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. but uh, yeah, the, well, you know, times do change. Yeah. And you have to, you know, sometimes accept certain things, but not like it. Sure, you sure. You know? Sure. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, I get very upset when I hear and I see you know, what's happening with the young people that are not doing what they should be doing. Sure. But uh, I don't know if it's me or, you know, uh, my, you know, my upbringing or even uh, the time that I was brought up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, I know, I know that each generation is different. I know sure. that. But uh, sometimes it's to the extreme. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that was you know uh, living on uh, in the South Bronx. I I really really uh, loved you know. Oh, did I? Just, I don't know if I mentioned that when you were sick, the doctor would come to the house. You did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah wonderful. So, <laughs> so that was uh, a very uh, reassuring, you know. Because if you had a, a temperature, or you were very, very sick and felt, you know, bad. Yeah. That they would come. Yeah. Wow. And, but that was that stopped a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. That, so, I think they try to bring it back, but it didn't work. Yeah. It's just, I guess, it's just, it's just too many things happening now. Yeah. That it prevents them from doing that. Although. Uh, I have heard of some doctors going to, to see, visit elderly. Sure, sure. I've heard so of that, too. The, yeah. which is, that would be, you know, they, they should start a, like a group. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely. Then they may have it, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure either, but. Yeah. But anyway, so that was another thing, you know, that, uh, that uh, we had. And uh, going to the hospitals when you were sick. You know, it wasn't like now that, you know, you have to go through all, you, you don't have uh, a coverage, yeah. you know, the whole thing. I it's, know. It's so, so different. Definitely. But, yeah. But, yeah, that, that, that is uh, some of the things that I realized that we had and people don't have now. Sure, sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so, so uh, about... I guess when I was, you know, we had the house parties and all that, uh, even through, you know, up until I, I met Tony, even after we used to get together. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I told you about how we met, right? You the did, Palladium. you did. What a, what a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I could still remember, <laughs> he gave me his, his last name is, Fortuna and Fortuna is a fortune, mm. and the, Anthony Fortuna. And then uh, he admitted to me when we started going out that his name was Montezia. Yeah. Uh, I said, "Why did you do that?" I guess he was, you know, I don't know. <laughs> he was he was trying to be um, uh, not incognito, but just. Wanted to be sure of the relationship, uh, yeah. and that nobody would come after him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was that was one of the stories with Tony. So um, anyway, we got married in uh, 1954. Uh, we had a small wedding. 
Sure. In my mother's apartment. Oh, beautiful. Because that, yeah. that was, and I got married in uh, St. Anselm's Church. Okay, sure. In the yeah. South Bronx. And uh, my sister Lillian was my maid of honor, and Tony's best friend, uh, Austin, was his best man. And we had a little reception with the family and my closest friends. Sure. And my mother, you have to picture this, one bedroom apartment. Yeah. And uh, everybody, you know, enjoyed themselves. Absolutely. So that was nice. And then um, I actually went to live in Tony's mother's and father's, you know, her parents' home for a year. Okay. Because we couldn't find an apartment, and I'll tell you why we couldn't find an apartment, because sure. they wouldn't rent to us. Of course, yeah, and yeah, even, yeah. Uh, even where the community I lived, yeah. uh, uh, 149th Street, we would go over to the other side of, a, uh, of, uh, of 149th, it was, we were on 151st Street, and we'd go to uh, the, the opposite side, Yeah. and they wouldn't rent to us. Wow. Uh, they didn't rent to Puerto Ricans. Sure. And they were open about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So wow. we, 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 we had to, you know, we went to live with Tony's parents for about a year in, in uh, uh, Harlem in 129th Street. Okay, okay. Or Fifth really Avenue. Lit. Yeah. And we lived there for about almost a year. Uh, I gave birth to uh, my son in 1955. Sure. And um, I had started looking for uh, the night job project. Yeah, and, yeah. Because, uh, you know, we just couldn't, <laughs> we couldn't get what we, what we wanted. So we even went, we even went to Washington Heights. Yeah. Because my sister's friend would live there. Sure. This is all you could, you know, find an apartment where I lived. Yeah. I know. And they said no. I know. And they did, you know. So I started doing the whole thing with the, with the NYCHA. And at that time, you know, they weren't that great either in terms of who they... Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they definitely they, gave they, preference they, to white yes. families. And they, they would send... They would send you to places that you didn't want to go. Yeah, yeah. I think they gave us... One in Staten Island, and I said absolutely <laughs> not. And one yeah. in Brooklyn, and I said no. Yeah. And I think on the third one, if if you said no, uh, they would put you at the bottom of the list. Oh wow! But anyway, the third one, they uh, we, oh we tried to get into the Pelham houses. Oh okay, yeah. They didn't have no way, huh? no way, no way for Latinos to get wow. in there. Wow. And I'm sure uh, black families oh, couldn't yeah. either. Yeah. Well, the last the last one they offered us was Gun Hill. Okay. The Gun Hill uh, projects. Yeah. And and I you know, we said yes and we went and we we loved it. Um, and there again they had one when they when they first opened. Yeah. They had one Puerto Rican family per floor. And the same with the the uh, African American. And those are big buildings too, so I'm, I'm sure there the, were a lot. They, it was actually that that project, the Gun Hill Houses, was small in comparison to the others. Oh, sure, it sure. It was yeah. really we had thirteen four. I think it was fourteen floors. Yeah, I think it was fourteen, 14 floors, floors. Okay. and there were six buildings. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was a. Uh, comparison it was small sure sure and again it was community yeah and there um, we we loved living in Gun Hill yeah and one of the things that happened was that when I we found out that we were living there that was the area that my my teacher in junior high school had grown up in ah, in the farms yeah in wow. the farms of Gun Hill. Yeah. And yeah. she's the one that told me about the teeth. You know, That's be true right. to your teeth or yeah. they will be false to you. <laughs> I never <laughs> forgot her. Well, for me to be live you know, to be living there, 
it was like a godsend yeah to be living in a place where i had heard about sure from this teacher because she used to tell us you know that there, it was farmland when she grew up here yeah and actually when we did move up there was a farm oh, okay okay so it was opposite immaculate conception church sure uh which is on um, gun hill road and in the uh in the farm they had goats and wow. it was Italian it was an Italian family that owned it yeah yeah and this was opposite uh Evander Child's high school sure sure or what was Evander Child yeah. I don't think I don't know I that they call it now. multiple things now, yeah, yeah exactly so uh that was kind of fun you know wow. to be living <laughs> you know so close to a place that I had heard about yeah and I had actually visited the area one time when I was living with with my mom when I was uh maybe about six no I was younger maybe about 12 13 years old yeah uh Evelina's ne- uh, neighbor was German oh okay okay and she yeah. had family that lived up in that area and sure. they took me one day they went to visit family and they took me yeah yeah that was a nice family you know th- that was the was the wonderful thing that people you know the community they were very open yeah. you know to accepting new people maybe because they all were immigrants too yeah absolutely. absolutely so that was nice i anna was her name and uh she was uh right next door to Evelina. wow okay yeah yeah, yeah that was uh, and uh anyway so getting back to gun hill um when we uh when we went to live there we made friends right away okay because they, yeah. they, they were again you know like i said it was a community and and they were, they came and and, and uh, invited us to sure. certain things um i met uh, one of my dearest friends uh in the playground yeah and uh, she had uh, Anita her name, her name was Anita and my son uh, Tony the oldest sure and that's where we met wow and we were friends until she made her transition wow yeah yeah but we used to get together with parties we used to we uh, there talking about house parties i gave a lot of house parties okay okay yeah 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 cuz we had uh, a lot of friends that you know we used to uh uh but we grew up with and then they got married but we still you know, uh, got together sure. so that was nice and i used to do theme parties i used to do the oh, whole Hawaiian <laughs> luau uh all kinds of things you still have a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds a lot like of fun. It. And I mean, my, my children will probably tell you that they remember, you know, the people coming to the house cuz that's what I, you know, I grew up with too. Yeah. You know. And uh it was it was a fun time. So my children were um let me see. Uh Anthony was well, he he was already a year and a half when we moved there. Sure. And then I didn't have Paul until 5 years 5 years later. Okay, I see. So I there see, was yeah. a big difference. They were 5 5 years apart. 5, five and a half apart. years apart. But uh they used to go downstairs to play and I was on the 12th floor and facing the playground. So I could, you know, watch them and they <laughs> I used to be able to whistle uh there was a special whistle that my girlfriend had shown me and I used to whistle for them and their friends would say your mother's calling you <laughs> that's funny I, I I remember someone just a, a couple weeks ago their parents had a, a whistle a special whistle for them too <laughs> yeah and this was uh, I used to do it I can't do it now but I used to, you know like in yeah and, and they used to come out this it would really you know uh you could really hear it from a distance but uh, uh it was great they the the kids had a good childhood at gun hill they really did and uh met uh 
again, have made their transition. So I'm blessed to be here to talk about them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they were all Bronx people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah they and were. as far as um, the friends that you made at Dunhill and, and the people that you typically socialize with, many of the white residents socialize with you? It was, yeah. So it's mo it mostly the racism was mostly from NYCHA, not the NYCHA authorities and right. I see. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because the people, you know, that I met there were both, uh, all, you know, uh, languages and, sure. and white and, and uh, Afro-American and Puerto Rican. And like I said, the Puerto Rican and the, and, and the Afro-Americans were uh, not very small portion. very small portion. Yeah. But the rest were all, again, you know, uh, Jewish, the Italian, yeah, I mean, a mixture of everything. Yeah, yeah. And the schools, the schools were oh, great. Oh, sure, sure, the, yeah. We, uh, my children went to PS41. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, which was like a block and a half away, which yeah. is, you know, great because when he, when Tony got a little older, I didn't have to take him to school. Sure. And uh, they had great teachers, uh, both of them. And uh, they were, you know, they were pretty bright. Um, they they actually uh, read before they went to school. Oh, that's wonderful. Before they went to kindergarten. Yeah. So the teachers were really happy with them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, my mother used to think they were genius. Sure. <laughs> when we were, we were in the car, we would be in the car. We had bought a car and, and she was... Pretty, you know, she was well then at that time, and she would hear Anthony calling out all the cars. Yeah. And she says, she would say in Spanish, "Es un genio, he's a genius." <laughs> and it was because his smart, father yeah. was into cars, yeah. and she, he would, you know, tell him about the cars. Yeah. And so he knew the cars. It wasn't that, that he was a genius; it was that his father, you know, had really uh, taught him about them. Sure, sure. Yeah, but it was, it was. Great, you know, yeah. to hear her say that he was a genius. Yeah. Uh, so they had a very good experience there. The, 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 my two sons actually skipped, uh, they went from the second grade to the fourth. Okay, they skipped okay. a whole year. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, uh, and they did very well. The teachers adored the, adored the two of them. And they were good students. And uh, Anthony went. Anthony went to the junior high school there. Mm. Forgot the name of it. He was there for junior high school. So uh, after you know we we moved, uh, things were a little different. You know, uh, they were at high school. Sure. And oh yeah, high school. Anthony was going to high school and Paul was going to middle school. I he see. went to a middle school that's on off Gun Hill Road. Okay, okay, I yeah. Got the name of one forty four, I think it is. Yeah, he went there. But uh, their uh, upbringing in the Bronx and their experience at, at co-op uh, a little different for both because sure. Anthony was already a high schooler. Yeah. And he did make some friends here. Uh, Paul made a lot of friends here because yeah. he was younger. Yeah, yeah. And sure it was uh, for him. I, uh, you know, I'm thankful that we came, you know, to live here. Even though it was a little hard, it was the we were pioneers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it was a. a, a quite a change for us, you know, Sure. the distance of, you know, uh, getting around too. Oh, I know you, I'm sure, I'm sure you had to drive everywhere. Well, I wasn't, here. I wasn't driving then. Uh, I would take, you know, the public transportation, sure. but, uh, uh, Tony and I, you know, we had a pretty good marriage. We were married for 25 years. Okay. Yeah. But then sometimes we, you know, you grow apart without realizing sure. why you grow apart. Uh, part of it was that I, I 
decided to go to uh, to college. Oh yes, absolutely. And um, I was working for UBP at the time for United sure. Points Parents, and I got the opportunity to go to Westbury. Yes, yes. And what happened was that uh, I had been working there and one of the professors from Westbury had been uh, working with us on a project in, uh, at UBP. Sure. And he said, and he, he had asked me, he had written a book and he had asked me to, to help him with the, uh, to, you know, review and see the, the English, because he was from Puerto Rico. Anyway, sure. to, and I used to type for him. Okay, okay, yeah. So, one day he said, you know, when are you going back to school? Yeah. And I said to him, oh, in September. This, huh. was, this was January. Yeah. And uh, he says, oh, no, you're not. You're going to go now. <laughs> I says, but it was too late. I says, they have, you know, re uh, registration is yeah. over. And he said, don't worry. Just, you know, I'll drive you there. And actually, by that time, oh, I had, t I had gotten my license. Oh, okay, okay. I had gotten my yeah. license, but I had never driven outside of the neighborhood. Sure. And uh, he said, no, no, you, you know. So anyway, to make a long story short, I picked him up at UBP, and we went, and we went to Westbury. Yeah. That's where the school was, uh, SUNY at Old Westbury. Sure. And when we... When we were driving, he, he, I was driving, and he was in this, uh, you know, the passenger seat. He says, make sure you see where you're going because you're going to be coming back here on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> and I, actually, that's what happened. He, wow. He, he got me in with late registration. Yeah. And he said, take two courses that you know that you're going to enjoy. So I took basic English sure. and uh, cultural uh, uh, cult cultures, you know, it was a, uh, about the different cultures in the world. Sure, sure. Comparative cultures, I think it was. Yeah. Name. And after that semester, I got A's. Yeah. And I, and I said, yeah, I was. Wow. The, my husband at the time was, Tony was not, I'm not going to say jealous, but he wasn't happy that I was going to be working and going to school and, you know, what about me? Sure, that yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. And uh, so things started to to deteriorate. And uh, finally, I started in school in 74 and we separated in 75. Okay, I see. Yeah, so yeah, it was, yeah. you know, but, um, and, you know, it was, it was a shock to my my family. Um, sure. My son Tony was already in college. Yeah. He had gone to uh, Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah. he was studying there, and and Paul was in uh, in high school right here. Sure. Truman. Truman. Yeah. So uh, it was a, you know, it was a difficult time because. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I said it before that I never wanted to live alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, my sister Lillian always used to say to me in my house that she couldn't wait to be an adult so that she could have her own place. Yeah. I s leave my mother, you know. <laughs> yeah, I sure. never wanted, and even when I got married, you know, that was a hard thing, leaving you know, my mom. Absolutely. You know, some people can do it and some people, you know, hang on. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a hard time, but I had my family yeah. backing me, you know, helping me if I needed anything. Yeah, yeah. And but, uh, and then the, my sons were, you know, quite grown. It wasn't like they were little. Sure, sure, yeah. But it's, it's still, it's still a, a shock to the system. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you were working at UBP the whole time you were I in was working, school? yeah. What happened was that I, during the summer, I used to put in so much time, you yeah. know, over time with, we had a summer lunch program. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put so much time that I had uh, comp time 
Oh, sure, sure. So that comp time, I used, I used to go to school two days a week. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I go from 7 in the morning, I would leave here, and I get home about 11 at night. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I, I was... I was happy. I was determined. I loved the school. Yeah. At that time, it was so. Di I know that it's different now. It's not what it was, but uh, they were on a mission to to uh, uh, educate people that couldn't have been educated earlier. Yeah. yeah and that yeah. was uh, women dedicated to women and older adults. Absolutely. And the young ones too. Sure. But uh, the the classes were mixed, you know, integrated into yeah. uh, intergenerational. Sure, sure. So you learned a lot from the older people. Yeah. And uh, they learned from you, the younger ones. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I know. I know a number of the young lords, the founding members, went there, and I. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, well, when I was there, they were already gone or yeah yeah because they, they were at planting fields yeah that was the name uh i don't know who you interviewed but was uh, it Matt, uh, denise oliver uh, Bella, denise, she went denise, there right? yeah. mm -hmm. um and she she named a lot of uh yeah lot felipe, of went there. felipe went there uh felipe luciano i think, I think um uh Cintron? oh Cintron. i think yoruba went there for a period of time maybe. Pablo? yeah yeah but they were um, all at planting fields and yeah. I when I came planting fields was closed already sure sure because yeah. I was the original yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They, were, they were kind of some of, I, I think Denise was one of the guinea pigs uh one of the in, maybe even in the first class or um, yeah yeah something like that yeah but she lives upstate now she does yeah yeah yeah, yeah. She, she she actually did an interview for this and the Bronx African American History Project yeah kind yeah. of joint one as well right um, right yeah but yeah Yes, she became a professor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, really interesting history, and in, you know, with us. Oh, and our teachers were very progressive too. Sure, sure. They were wonderful, wonderful teachers, uh, and that was one of the things that bothered uh, my husband was that, uh, you know, the teachers had a diff. It wasn't like we were in school and they used to call Mister and Missus. Yeah. Yeah. There you call them by their first name. Sure, sure. Because it was, you know, we were supposed to be all together. Yeah. And so one day, one of my teachers called and asked for me. And, oh, and he, and then I said, oh, Francis, how are you? And my, my husband, he couldn't believe that I was calling a professor by the first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. those are the little things that happen. Sure, sure. But, like, it was... A different world for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. a different world for me, but it was a good world. Yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, while you're at United Bronx Parents, just to focus mm -hmm. on that for a little bit, um, what are some of the other things that you helped out with aside from the summer? Uh, oh, I started program? out as a secretary. Okay, I see. I was yeah. Evelina's secretary. Sure. For a long time, yeah, because she had a lot of trust in me, you know, being my, you know, sister, and uh, and I was a good worker. Yeah, you know? oh, I'm sure. I, I I took shorthand and I I typed. I you know, I was the secretary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we used to yeah yeah, um, and then she made me the office manager. Sure. Because it was just a lot of. Uh, different uh, staff. Yeah, it had grown, so I was the office manager, and I could tell you something about Evelina. Sure. When some when somebody wasn't doing their work and she needed to, you know, say goodbye to them, she would never she would never do it. Yeah. She, you know what she would do? She would get them another job. Oh. Someplace okay. else. I see. Yeah. Wow. She just you know she couldn't bring herself to have. You know, to get rid of people, you sure. know, fire them before she get them another job. Wow. Wow. That was my sister. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, just, I would say, Evelina never fires anybody, 
she either asks me to do it or, <laughs> or she gets them, but nine times out of ten she got the wow. position somewhere. Wow. <laughs> And say, no, this person is very good. You, <laughs> they'll do well yeah. for you. And, and, and it worked out. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Isn't it? That is. Yeah. I mean, who does that? I, no, no one, no one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I was that, and uh, I would be the person, you know, to greet people coming in. You sure. Know. Uh, and then we had, we had, one, we had about four offices outside of the main office. Oh, okay, okay, wow. And we yeah. had the daycare center. Yeah. Yeah, we had, you know, we had grown. Yeah, Really, absolutely. really grown. And uh, things were moving, you know, quite along. And uh, Evelina was in everything. I mean, the bilingual program that she, she instituted. Sure. Before, she be, be, before she became the executive director of, or founded UBP, she worked um, in, it was PRCDP, it was a Puerto Rican organization, mm. nonprofit. I don't know if any of the people you've interviewed talked about it. May, uh, I'm trying to remember. I've seen it before, but I don't think anyone has yeah, talked uh, about it. Well, it, it was before. many of the people that uh, were working for the Puerto Rican community sure. were there. Eddie Gonzalez, Antonia Pantoja. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, it was the list is long. I mean, uh, and they all became, the people that worked there, uh, really became well known. Yeah. Uh, have you interviewed uh, uh, Federico Perez? I haven't yet, um, but yeah. He could talk, he, he talk worked there. This. He yeah. could tell you about that organization. Yeah. And then he worked for uh, 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 Jose Serrano. Oh, okay, okay. He yeah, worked for, he worked for Jose Serrano. Oh, uh, that's right. I think um, I think Jose Encarnacion mentioned, mentioned him them a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, anyway. Getting back to uh, to UBP, um, a lot of the organizations in the area Evelina worked with. She worked with sure. the elected officials. So my, you know, my position there, you know, was to assist her, you know, and be her her eyes sure. too. And uh, I told you about the. Uh, when she was uh, elected to be uh, on the anti-poverty program, did uh, you talk about that? I don't think you talked about that. No, no, no. Oh. no. Well, uh, under Lindsay, uh, she was appointed to be the co-chair for the New York Urban Coalition. Mm. That was a big, big thing. Yeah. The anti-poverty program. Absolutely. And that was one of the f first. Uh, uh, recognitions of her, her abilities and her power in this sure. community, and uh, they had a big, big uh, uh, celebration and event. And we went to City Hall, yeah. and she was sworn in. There's a picture. Wow. Joey might be able. Joey has it. Okay, Joey has it. She's yeah. being sworn in, and she says in an interview, she says, "I don't know if, if John was." Uh, Swearing me in or swearing at me. <laughs> yeah. You know, Evelina had a way of, you know, how could I put it? She was a diplomat. Yeah. And, and I, I, would, I used to say that she, she had the ability to tell you to go to hell and you could say thank you. <laughs> she, she, that was her. That's she a skill. Really, that's a oh, yeah. definite skill. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, the, I don't know again if I mentioned when when John Lindsay called one day. No, no, you didn't oh, mention that. Okay. No. All right. So here we are. I'm the secretary. I get them pick up the phone, and it's John Lindsay's secretary. Yeah. Says to me, "Oh, uh, this is the mayor's office calling. The mayor would like to speak to uh, Mrs. Antonetti." And she was on the phone. Yeah. 
So I told her, uh, the secretary to hold on. I put her on hold, and I said, I, we used to call her Titi, my sister. Mm, sure. I said, Titi, the mayor's on the phone. So she's still on the phone. She yeah. goes, I'll call him back. <laughs> I said, uh, so then I got back on. I said, you know, she's on another call. Uh, can, can she call the mayor back? Of course. When she has time, you know, to call. So she, so then when uh, she hung up and then she gave me the information, I, and I dialed for her and all that. So when she gets on the phone, she goes, hello, John, how are you? You know, it was, <laughs> and I went, oh, oh, my sister. <laughs> <laughs> but she used to get calls from everybody. Yeah. Pavia would call. Sure. Uh, I mean, Everybody, uh, uh, Garcia, okay, who was sure. our, our congressman, yeah, uh, was, and Serrano, of course. Serrano, Evelina pushed him to, to go into politics. Oh, okay, I see, yeah. But when, you know, when we knew him, he was not in politics. Sure. He was working in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, no, no, you, you, you have it, you can do it. And she did it. You know, he, he, he first went up to the state assembly. Sure, yeah. And then later on, he, when Garcia uh, left, he ran for Congress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I still call him Joe. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he actually went to the high school that I went to. Oh, really? Okay, okay. But he went, uh, when... I graduated from Bronx Vocational that last year that I was there. Yeah. They had changed the name of the school to Grace Dodge. Oh, I can, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, they, they moved to up, up uh, by Bronx Park. Yeah. You know, around that area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, Serrano went to that school too. Oh, wow. But in fact, I see a lot of people put down Grace Dodge as, oh, they went to Grace Dodge, but not the time that I went. Sure, yeah, yeah. Bronx Vocational. Yeah. yeah, and Bronx Vocational was, you know, just a very small school in an elementary school. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, they had Bronx Vocational for boys. Yeah. And then the Bronx Vocational I went to was uh, boys and girls, but mainly girls. Okay, mainly sure. girls were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I got a good education there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I did tell you when I went for a job, right? I talked did, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. did. That was, that was hard. Yeah, absolutely. That was hard. But, uh, yeah, I, my, my employment record was really filled with uh, some interesting jobs. Sure. I think I went over them, the Orchard. Uh, on Orchard, be uh, Orchard, Orchard on the street. Street. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Duane Street. Yeah. And then I went to work for for Evelina when I had my you know my first son. Yeah. That I needed, you know, she offered for me to work at home. Sure. So I was one of the first to work at home. Work at work at home. <laughs> <laughs> no computer, just a yeah. typewriter. It yeah. was a Reming Remington Rand. Wow! Click 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 click. click. <laughs> so when we got when we got the uh, the Selectric in in, in uh, UBP. Yeah. That was, oh my goodness! How you know? How am I gonna learn this? Yeah. But you know, once you learn, you learned it. It was great. And then it was obsolete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that didn't last as long as the typewriter. I know. Did. I yeah. know. The yeah. electric. I used to have one here. I had bought one. I used to have one, and I, I, when I did one of my cleaning out, I, I gave it away to someone, and she took it to a, a thrift, one of those uh, places where you you, you uh, donate. Sure, and sure. I don't know what she got for it, but yeah, that was a nice. I do have a Smith Corona. Oh really? Okay, wow. Yeah, and somehow I, I, I just can't get rid of it. Does you still still work, or you haven't tested it out for I, a while? I, it still works. Yeah, it yeah. still works. I wow. just there's no reason to use it. Sure, now. sure, yeah. But I guess that's one of the things I should be, you know, 
don donating somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it brings back memories. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, uh, do you do you want to say more about any of the classes you took at, um, uh, at Westbury? Oh yeah. Oh yes. Uh, so I took English that English class and. Uh, the next semester, I took the English, basic English two. Sure. And oh, I can tell you a story before I go on with. The, my son was in Puerto Rico. Sure. Studying, uh, but things there got a little hot with, uh, with you know, they were having a lot of uh, sit-ins and yeah. stuff, and it was getting kind of. So he wanted to come back to New York. Sure. And. He wanted to know about the school I was going to. Yeah. And I said, uh, okay, you know, what is it? He, well, I'm thinking of coming back to New York. And so I sent him the information and he liked what he read. Yeah. So he decides he's coming back. So before he, he registered, I said, you know, I want you to know that I found that school first. <laughs> so, and I know, I knew him, I knew how he felt about being a mama's boy. Yeah. And I said, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, being in the same school, you know, I'm the one that's not gonna leave. Yeah, yeah. And, no, no, no. But, when he did register, he got accepted. He didn't ask me what I was taking. And he registered for the same English class that I had. <laughs> so then he didn't want anybody to know <laughs> that I was his mother. So I had to tell my teacher, Mr. F uh, Fulani. Fulani, uh, he was the only one in the class that knew that he was my son. Yeah. And I wasn't happy about it because I, I frankly didn't want to look like I, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And. And it was competition for me. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Because he was younger and, you know, young people can pick up things better than older people. Uh, he, here I was 41 years old. Sure. All right? Yeah. And he's, what else was it? Maybe 19? Yeah. yeah. 18, 19? Anyway, uh, so he decided, you know, he would. Um, stay in the uh, school sure. in, in, uh, and uh, he would come home weekends. I said, that's fine. So when he used to see me on the campus, he would say hello, but he would, you know, sort of say hello this way. Yeah. He was like, you know, <laughs> you know, you're my mom, but I don't want anybody to know you're my mom. <laughs> so one day I think his friend, Frankie, said to him, you should be proud that your mother going to, is going to school. Yeah. He says, you know, he says, I'm proud of her. He says, well, you know, don't act that way. You know, he told them straight yeah. out. So then he started, you know, to let people know, oh, yeah, that's my mom. Yeah. So he actually graduated a year before I did. Sure, sure. Because he had transferred over credits. Yeah. And so he graduated in 77 and I graduated in 78. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but th there, the courses were wonderful. I learned so much in the politics, yeah, economics and society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's I had all those courses right. about, you know, uh, what the world was like, you know, uh, especially global. global. Sure. And then I had to, I took Spanish as well, as an you know adult, because I had Spanish from the house, you know. Yeah. And what yeah. I learned in uh, in junior high school, but yeah. not it wasn't you know as intense. Sure. So I had I had that, and uh, it was a, it just a, a very good learning experience. I actually did. Uh, Yeah, the experience, the experience at Westbury was the beginning of a change in who, who I was, and uh, I had more confidence in myself. Yeah, it, yeah. It really changed my life. Uh, 
the courses on you know women's rights was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, one of my teachers wrote this book, uh, Bodies Ourselves. Oh, sure, sure. And wow. uh, so the influence there uh, really, you know, even though my sisters had always, you know, given me uh, an opportunity, you know, to be who I was too. Yeah. Uh, until I start going to school and seeing the world in a different way. Uh, it, it was quite a challenge. Yeah, it was yeah. quite a challenge. And I guess it was a challenge to my marriage too. Sure, absolutely. Because it was a different dynamic going on. You know, uh, when I talk about change, the way, you know, people are today, you know, in their marriages, it's a 50-50. Yeah. And during my time, it was the woman did everything and the husband went out to work. Yeah. And when he came home, you know, he was the king of the house. So yeah, yeah. it was quite a difference. Quite For a sure. difference in my, in what I perceived what I should be and what it, you know, what it turned out to be. Yeah. Anyway. So, um, you know what, I'd like to go, just because we're t talking about Thanksgiving uh, this week, this past week, Thanksgiving was one of our favorite holidays at sure. home. Uh, and it started when I was little, you know, in my house, in, in my apartment, <coughs> uh, living in uh, El Barrio, sure. and then on to the Bronx. It became just one of the most important holidays. Absolutely. That we had a family together. Sure. And uh, so I have very good memories of that. Uh, my mom uh, actually... Uh, was uh, a wonderful cook. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we all ate together, you know, for the for the holidays. The one that I remember very clearly is the last Thanksgiving we had together. Oh, okay. With my mom. Sure, sure. Uh, she was uh, already had been diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's, mm. and uh, just that was the. And, 1968. Okay, yeah. 68. No, it was 69 that uh, we had the last the last dinner together in Evelina's house. Sure. Because she had a, a home and she had this big long table and uh, everybody was there, the, the children, the grandchildren. Um, it was just a... a, a a wonderful time. Yeah. And I have a picture of, of us, the four of us. It's uh, my, with my mother, the three of us with my mom. So that, yeah. uh, that's become, you know, you, you'll see it everywhere. So Joey could also give you that sure. picture showing my mom. Uh, she had, she had uh, been diagnosed already in her 50s with, with wow. uh, with the Parkinson's, but it just and she worked. She kept working. Yeah, she kept working, but uh, I did. I, you know, talking about dinners. Did did I talk about our Sunday dinners? You did. You did. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um. yes, and and uh, you know, it was when we got together. It was it was just such a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. And uh, we just, you know, we loved each other, so it was, it's just great. Absolutely. And um, I'm, I'm thinking back now to, to uh, uh, I think I told you that I, I didn't think my aunt knew how to cook. <laughs> yeah, it surprised it, you so it, much when yeah, you saw her. Yeah, especially <laughs> since my mom and my and papi, my uncle, were the ones that, that just, they were the cooks. Sure. And I, I, I was, she looked at me, she, I think she was hurt. <laughs> you cook? <laughs> <laughs> but there were certain things, talking about cooking, my mother was a great cook, but there were certain things that she said she refused to make because it was too much work, and that was pastel. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> so she much said, work. no way. I think, and, and that's the reason that she never made them, 
but she did make other things. Sure, She did sure. make other things that I still, every once in a while now since I'm home, I'll say, gee, I feel like eating that and I'll make it. You yeah, know? yeah. And, uh, and it turns out pretty good. <laughs> so, so did you learn all of her secrets to cooking? You know, when I got married, <laughs> I I used to call her almost every day because sure. I, I really didn't pay too much attention yeah. while I was home. Yeah. So she would uh, she would tell me, and uh, or when I went to the I would go to the house. Sure. To to the apart her apartment, she would show me. So. So that's how I learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first turkey that I made, which had nothing to do with Thanksgiving, <laughs> um, we invited my uh, comadres, my, sure. uh, that was my the godparents to my, to my poor. And uh, we were living in, in uh, Gun Hill, in the uh, Gun Hill Projects. And I made this turkey. Yeah. And when I went, to uh, oh, when I was cleaning it, I, I, I said, Ooh, where are the gizzards, you know? I, yeah. I didn't find it, I just didn't, you know, add it to the turkey. Well, I cooked the turkey, and then when Tony started uh, slicing it and taking out the, uh, the stuffing, yeah. we found there it they were. <laughs> in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was on the other side, it was frozen sure, on the other sure. side. Yeah. So I, they laughed, and I was so embarrassed, <laughs> but I never forgot. So th just now, when I did the turkey for, you know, I seasoned it, who yeah. says, where's the gizzards and the, and the liver and all that? <laughs> he says, oh, I, says, I took it out so we could boil it and make a broth. <laughs> sure, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and then I told him the story, they yeah. thought it was hysterical. <laughs> and, it, and it was, but I, I didn't find it funny. Yeah. Because everybody right. was laughing at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget that. But, uh, yeah, so I learned how to cook. But one time I made Tony some rice, mm. or made rice for dinner. I was in, yeah, we were living in, in Manhattan in his mom's house. And uh, I said, you know, I made this right rice. And I saw that it came out mushy. Mm -hmm. I hate mushy rice. Sure, absolutely. I just don't. So when he came home, I served him, and I didn't say anything. And I so then I said, "Did you like the rice?" He goes, uh, "Could you have? <laughs> do you have ketchup?" <laughs> <laughs> so I gave it to him. I, after that, I said, "You cannot ever ask me for ketchup again because <laughs> I'll know that." You don't like the food. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's a big thing. So my, my sons will say, Ma, you got ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> but I learned I hadn't put too much water in it. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that came out. Ooh. So, yeah. So, yes, I did learn how to cook and I cook. I'm a pretty good cook. I learned how to make the pasteles. Oh, sure. In fact, uh, in uh, UBP, Evelina had, uh, we had, she had founded this university, Ura Yaan, mm. and uh, she had, she, she never got the license for it, but we had, we had a good two years of it, and mm. the community used to come and they had uh, courses on uh, arts and culture yeah. and, and other things and politics, and one of them was a cooking class, and okay. I was in charge of that. Okay, yeah, yeah. wow. So uh, one of the uh, parents showed me how to make uh, the pasteles of yuca, yuca, oh, the yuca sure, plant. sure, sure, sure. So we, that was one of the things. I showed them how to make a uh, flan, uh, you know, different dishes. Yeah. And we, uh, in fact, we made a little recipe book. Oh, that's wonderful. During wow. that time for the parents. And we did it bilingually. Sure, yeah. So that everybody could read it. So that was kind of fun. I liked that. And uh, and I, you know, during the time that I wasn't working and I was, uh, my children were in school, I became the editor of their newsletter for oh, the parents. Oh, yeah. sure. And uh, fast forward, I became the editor 
for the newsletter for AHA, for the Association of Hispanic Arts. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was just, you know, it was something that was in me. Sure. And I was and able to do that. done the editing for um, uh, Emil Carterado, and that's how you got into West yeah, Berlin to yeah, get it, right? Yeah, well, and that was a different, you know, that was a more uh, 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 academic yeah, sure. academia. Sure, sure. But the others were kind of on the fun side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with the uh, giving information on on the community and then later on the arts. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that was Thanksgiving. So to me, Thanksgiving has to be one of the best get-together family outings. Absolutely, yeah. It really is. I, I really enjoy it and... Uh, we have a good time. And last year, I, I completely forgot that we didn't meet because of the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, and I said, oh, didn't we have it here? And they said, mom, we did it on, on uh, Zoom. And I had forgotten. Yeah, you see, The yeah, things yeah. that uh, I've heard, sort of, you know. Sure. Yeah, so anyway, so yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, a really, Nice thing to get together again, now, especially now with my little one, Absolutely. who loves holidays. And she says, "Can we sing uh, Happy Thanksgiving?" <laughs> and I said, "Sure." So we did it to Happy Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to you, and she just loved That's it. That's funny. <laughs> and one of the nicest things that happened during our dinner this year is that um, my son did the prayer before yeah. we ate. And uh, you said that you'd like to give thanks. Yeah. And she's four and a half. <laughs> and she said, I, I'm thankful for my mother and my mommy and daddy, my tata, she calls me tata, sure. and my sister. And she even added my ancestors. Oh, wow. And That's we wonderful. were, yeah. Uh, because <laughs> the mother, you know, shows her pictures and she says, those are your ancestors. Yeah. So she knows, you know, and then uh, she, 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 she's able to grasp a lot. Yeah. A lot. I'm really proud of her. So that was kind of special. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be getting together again for the holidays for Christmas. And, Good. And we'll be together. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully this new strain doesn't affect us at all. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hope so too. Yeah. So anyway, um, I, I did talk about Thanksgiving because I wanted to do that. Yeah, so once I had my degree at, uh, uh, at Old Westbury, I said, well, I have to do something with, with this uh, certificate, you know, it's important. Yeah. So I started to, um, you know, to, to talk to myself. And yeah. What is it that I really wanted to do? And I had gone, I had gone to, uh, to an event at Lincoln Center. Okay, sure. The, it was the uh, Caribbean Cultural Center. Okay, they they yeah. had an event there. And I knew the director and... Anyway, so, you know, she saw me and we talked and, and I, I got really excited about, you know, the performances and all that. And uh, she happened to say to me that she was looking for uh, an assistant for, to work at, uh, at AHA. Yeah. And, uh, and I told her I was interested and she got all excited and they arranged uh, uh, an interview for me, and I interviewed with uh, with Laura Moreno, mm -hmm. and uh, she was working there temporarily, but she really was working with Malta with her organization. Sure. And um, Elsa Ortiz Robles was working there too. Oh, okay. Uh, when I was interviewed, and I told Evelina you know, that I was thinking of leaving, she was, she was very sad, but she said, no, no, you have to, you have to do what's best for you. Sure. She sure. was very supportive. 
But, you know, she depended on me because I was, you know, her, she could depend on, on me and <clears throat> as her sister and also as the person that would have her back. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I made that decision, you know, to, to make that move. I had been with Evelina for 13 years. Wow, yeah. It's been, been a long time. So um, they hired me right away. And uh, I took, I, I made about the same amount of money. I didn't make any more money sure. than I was making. At, but I had, uh, I had got extra weeks vacation there. I think I got a couple of weeks more. And anyway, to make a long story short, I I took to it like uh, it was meant for me. Yeah, yeah. And I really, really learned a lot. I used the skills I had. Sure. But I learned so much more, you know. And also, I felt that I was uh, on my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was on my own because uh, I always had that feeling that I'm Evelina's sister, so you know I. You know what happens with family. Sure, you sure. feel that they're doing it because you're, but although you know she was pretty uh, strict too. You yeah. Know? So yeah. you know there were things I I never would, uh, you know do and well I wouldn't do anyway. But uh, yeah. it was a little different knowing that it was my sister. Sure, <laughs> sure. But uh, it uh, this new opportunity was great for me because. Here I was, a single woman at this point. You know, yeah. I was. Uh, I hadn't gotten a divorce, but we were separated. Sure. And uh, it was a little uh, not knowing what what was in store for me. Yeah. You know, uh, luckily, you know, I like I said before, my children were grown, so yeah. it wasn't like I had two little ones. Sure. But uh, it was uh, the beginning. It was the beginning of my new beginning. Absolutely. It was my Absolutely. new beginning, and uh, my journey was going to continue. I didn't know at that time, but that I was going to be taking different paths yeah. in my life. So I'd like to continue this, so we'll do that on the next one. Okay, We'll sure. pick up on AHA uh -huh and what I learned there and who I met. Sure. Okay? Absolutely. All right. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you.